I really thought I'd up the production value of Plant One On Me. I mean, you can already see that we've been upping the production value as we go. So I figured, why not go big or go home? Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's a movie being filmed on my street today. All right, so we're doing something really exciting today and something a little different. We are doing a whole houseplant home makeover in one of the new studio apartments in a condo building that is yet to open right outside the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens, which is awesome. We're outside of Prospect Park and the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens. And uh, so I can't wait to actually see the place. But the thing is, it's not only just gonna be house plants, we're actually going to be filling it with some more decor items as well. And they wanted it to look a little bit more boho chic and they were inspired by my own apartment. So we are going to see that place today. They weren't kidding when they said it was still under construction. I feel like I'm really overdressed for this. <laughs> Just watch that. Stairs. On the construction site. Yeah, sorry. All right, so come on in. Thanks. Um, the Murphy bed was just installed. I'm unsure if that's the right direction for the Murphy bed. Or okay, it so it just comes down here. Yeah, it okay. just comes down, but it has this like sliding adjustable desk thing, which is okay. cool. So like we, what we tried to do is like make this a multi-functioning apartment as much as possible. So right. You have the Murphy bed with the desk. You have this, could, which could serve as like extra counter space or like a place to work out off of as well. Right. I see you're facing some buildings here. Yes. Um, the screen will be down by mid-December, so like when we have final shots and stuff like that, the okay. screen will be gone, and then this blue paper is also making, um, it's not on these windows, but it's on this one, you can see it's making it a little bit more dark over here. Will they have like a balcony, or? No, there's no, no. balcony on this specific unit. Okay. Um, it's, this is actually really nice, or eventually will be really nice, because it's gonna overlook the community gardens. Oh, okay. Um, so, so it will have a little bit of a view if you look down. Exactly. It'll okay. Have a, a quote unquote court, courtyard view. Okay. Um, so really just depending on you to make this feel as much like you as possible. If you wanna make this look like a jungle, like. You know, right, like jungle. right. Well, um, I, it, it's, all, it's all in relation to the light that we have in here. Light's not so good, so we have to kind of get like the appropriate kind of plants yes. for it or additional lighting in order to be able to make it jungle-esque. Okay. So it's always dependent on light. You know, my house, massive southwest facing windows, nice northeast facing windows, so it, I get light on both sides. Cool. This, you know, is facing a building. It's a little bit of a lower light day because it's obviously winter, so yeah. it's, it's all going to be in that, that kind of capacity. Uh, it's north facing too, so like yeah. towards the afternoon you actually get Win more light. Window death though, north. Yeah, buildings and a little bend to the northeast. This will be challenge. Gave me a challenge. Yeah. You're like, hey, they have the plant person well, in the darkest corner. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> like, we need to stage these ones. Yeah, yeah. These are the ones that immediately people are going to say a little dark. Yeah. Or a little small. Yeah. So, like, when, you know, they really feel like home and you have plants and make it feel lush. Yeah. And they're going to say, oh, I can yeah. do it. Yeah, I think well, this is this is a will be a good one in the sense of like how can we get a relatively north north facing window with buildings, you know, be a little bit more of a, a lush apartment, you know, at the end of the day. It's, it's a personality. Yeah, mm -hmm. is there a bathroom too? Is yeah, there like absolutely. a? Well, I definitely think we should have like a little herb thing yeah. on the well, counter, like one of those li like lit yeah. herb things, just because. You have the countertop space. You don't have a lot of light. It's a nice like place. That, it's a nice area that you could augment that. So yeah, mm -hmm. you know, having yeah. that as one of the I mean, make it features. Feel like you look here. Like make it feel yeah. like whatever you would do in your own personal home. No, but I think that's a really good story to be able to see how can you do it because a lot of people live in darker climate, like darker areas, especially you know winter facing a building, that kind of stuff. It's more often that way than not. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So you awesome. Can Bye guys. Sorry. Okay, so that was it. Um, really shocking to actually see it because it's north facing windows, and I think that is going to be a big challenge. But it's going to be an interesting challenge to bring plants in that space because I think more often than not, a lot of our apartments don't have these big windows that are southern or western or even eastern exposure. And a lot of folks who love plants actually have to deal with northern exposures. And there was almost like no light coming in those windows even though they had big windows. So 
I will have my work cut out for me in this episode of a houseplant home makeover. One of the things that I really like about this building is that it's really close to Prospect Park and also the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens. And I guess if you are in that building, you get a free membership to the Botanic Gardens, which is awesome. So you have a little bit of green space inside potentially, and you have some green space outside. But I'm gonna do a little PSA because you'll see this sign right here outside the Botanic Gardens, fight for sunlight. And what's happening is that there's going to be another large unit that is going to go up at the Botanic Gardens and they're afraid that it's actually going to shade out the Botanic Gardens and therefore actually kill some of the trees and plants that are planted here. So this is one of the things that they are working on right now. I headed back home after the initial meeting to begin plotting out the look and feel for the studio space while taking in consideration the light constraints of the apartment. So I'm just taking my PAR meter here, which is actually measuring the amount of photons of light coming in. And I could see that these are also tinted windows, north facing and actually facing a building. So we are getting like the lowest light possible here. So we are going to have to bring in grow lights in order to be able to grow any plants whatsoever in this apartment. So this is one of those fabric baskets got this from um, West Elm and I I really like these so I'm not gonna get plants until afterwards um, so what I like about these baskets is you pretty much could use them for just about anything so if you want to put blankets in here if you want to put small like pillows in there or your clothes or maybe like a, a warm blanket if you're sitting like next to the couch um, or you could make this into a little planter basket. So it's like a sweater <laughs> for a plant, as long as you have something in there that catches the water because you wouldn't want the water to go down in there. So this is another one of the things that I got is these organic um, dyed towels. So you could see this just so uh, you'd have in the kitchen. Again, just practicality. First of all, the, the bathroom in there does not have any light whatsoever. So it has like a little light, but it has no windows. And that is a common problem that we have in our bathrooms. So what I like to do in my bathroom, even though I have a lot of light, some of the corners of my bathroom doesn't get a lot of light. So what I'd like to do usually is just get a, a really nice glass container or vase and um, put some dried flowers in. So you could actually get some of the color in with dried flowers and they'll never go bad. So that's like the challenge if you get cut flowers because they don't have roots and they're likely just going to die in like less than a week. And if you have a real plant and you have no light, then it's just gonna die as well, regardless of whether it has roots or not. But if you could get some cut flowers and we won't get them today, but if you can, then you could go with something like this, which I really like the look of this glass vase and we'll see if it actually fits in the bathroom and kind of again brings in that kind of like pink and peachy colors that we're going to try to achieve in that room. So I don't have plants yet, but this is one of the handmade planters that I got on Etsy. I believe it's um, from Pamela Ceramics. Probably have a bottom in there somewhere. Um, so that is that, it's really beautiful. It kind of brings in this color, which is from Bed Bath & Beyond. So this will be like a container that you can put your spatula or your slotted spoon or anything along those lines when you're actually cooking in here. Got these agate stones that I think were pretty nice. So we could actually have that as um, a place where you could put your cups and a little candle holder. So that will be for the bathroom. So this is another blanket from Anthropology, And again, has some of that turquoise, has some of that slubbing, has some of this, you know, those knitted balls that I really love. Some tassels. Oh yes, a berry bowl. Really love this one. It's also on sale. So brings in some of that gold color. And I mean, look how good these kind of go together, that blue and that gold. So you can see how that color like starts to pull in together. This is a bath mat and I got the smaller one, but if you see, we'll go into the bathroom and you can see that the bathroom, almost totally put together, but not completely. You can see that um, it, I need a smaller one for this room because it's, uh, it's quite tiny. So 
we're gonna have this for here, but you could see some of this gold color coming through, maybe a little bit of the, the blues, although this is baby blue, and we're getting some of these raspberries and pinks, which I thought would be really nice to bring through and then to feel like you're coming out into an environment that has some of, that, some of those golds and blues instead. I also got some towels for the bathroom. And what I really liked about these, other than the fact that they are kind of organic and um, is that they have that kind of slubby texture again. And what I mean by slubby texture is that it just kind of has this, um, uh, just these textural elements that are different from the, the base of it. So, um, and this one is quite nice because it has not only a textural element to it, but it also has some patterns. It's funny because when you're actually buying a bunch of this stuff, you have this idea in your mind's eye of how it's going to look in the house, but you don't exactly know for certain. So I think once um, I'm set up with everything here, I'll see what's really missing, what could really tie it together. So I just got my first load of products in to make this house look a little bit cozier. And even though I thought I actually got a lot, I realized that even though this place is small and I thought I got a lot, they're actually, it doesn't fill out the apartment as much as I thought it would. So I do think actually getting like a few statement plants in, um, bringing in some of the artwork that is yet to actually come in is going to really help feel a little bit more cohesive. But you're getting a little bit of the idea of what I want to bring in here, which is a little bit more textural elements, um, a little bit more color. So bringing in some of those jewel tones and kind of that gold ochre color in order to be able to break up some of the neutral tones in this place. So hopefully, hopefully soon, we'll have a part two or the next part, probably pretty much part three, because part one was me actually checking out this place. So hopefully we'll have a part three very soon. Though my first round of purchases were helpful in setting a tone for the space, I needed to get more items to truly make the house feel like a home. So I just arrived here at 111 Montgomery. This is the third time, I think it's the third time that I'm here. And I've just started to fill the place up in stages because one, it's hard to actually get everything on time, um, but we should have a big plant delivery today and I have all the artwork in. And this is a very special piece because it comes from a fellow plant lover, Alina, who happens to paint in Brooklyn. And uh, I saw this online and I think it's just like a really nice way to be able to support fellow plant people doing the uh, craft that they love. Let's see what this looks like. All right. Oh, really beautiful. Look at this. Ta-da! Oh, this is really going to pull in a lot of the colors. Look how gorgeous that is. So I took a look at the other rooms that are being put together here in 111 Montgomery, and they definitely went with a more modern, neutral palette tone colors of black, white, and gray. And this space is gonna be a little bit different because I'm really not afraid to bring in some color. So Alina's piece is going to be perfect. It's going to just tie in all the color palettes that we have in this small, tiny apartment. This space does not have a lot of light. And so we're gonna to have to augment with a lot of grow lights. But we could do that in like clever ways. So this, is a grow frame by Mod Sprout. So this hangs on the wall. Your plants sit on it like a frame, like a framed painting. And it has a grow light, one of the color palettes that I wanted to bring through here. Next thing that we have, I love this. This is from Artisan Moss. And you'll understand kind of the reason why I got preserved plants is because I want to see that pop of color, but you can't always rely on living plants in order to be able to do that, especially in north facing windows facing a building. It's just going to be too painful to watch the plants suffer in that kind of light. So I have this preserved moss kind of painting, if you will by Artisan Moss. I think they actually are some of the, the best at designing these. 
It's so beautiful, it makes me want to get one for my home. <laughs> I don't have wall space though. So this and in the combination with some of the preserved plants that I have here, which I'm gonna be doing some designs with because again, I want some of that color to come through, but you can't always rely on that with fresh cut flowers because they last for a week and then they're gone. And we are going to be getting some greens, the green plants, living plants for this space. But in the meantime, you'll have this green in order to be able to brighten up the room. So I worked with Goodfill on a couple different projects. And one of the things that they were doing recently is this garden, in-home garden system for your kitchen. And I really like the look of it. You know, it has this kind of like faux wood. And again, because we don't have a lot of light in this space, I wanna go with a very easy to use unit where you could grow herbs. And I imagine whomever is going to live here, even though she has a tiny little kitchen space, this will be a place where she could actually make um, a good meal for herself. Despite the fact that she doesn't have a lot of light, she could still grow some herbs. While unboxing some of the items, I was informed that Chelsea Garden Center arrived with a plant delivery. The plants are here. Thank you. Is your pen? Yeah, that's his. Okay. Thank you. After Chelsea Garden Center delivered the plants, we got to work on unwrapping and potting up the plants for the space. Okay, so we just got the delivery in from Chelsea Garden Center. I went the other day to pick out some plants, and I know that this space doesn't have a lot of light. We are going to be adding grow lights here and there, but we don't want to add so many grow lights that it becomes like an eyesore in this tiny little apartment. So I ended up taking in some more resilient house plants. Including a good old faithful snake plant. These are great, not only because they can survive across a range of conditions, but also I like the fact that they're columnar. They grow straight and upright. Except when they get really large, sometimes their leaves will flop over, but this is important because the space doesn't have a lot of room. So uh, it's good to have plants that don't necessarily take up the whole space. All right, what's behind door number two here? I always see Chelsea Garden Center doing their like un unwrappings, I would say unboxings, but unwrappings on their Instagram. So now I get a chance to do it myself. So this is the tall plant. This is the Dracaena marginata. And um, I wanted something with a little bit more punky foliage that uh, didn't have as many leaves down here. So I didn't go with the uh, corn plant, which is kind of the stubbier one with the thicker leaves that kind of have leaves all throughout. So um, having this statement piece that again is a little bit more columnar and then having the green foliage on top is gonna be important. This is a little bit taller than I expected because initially I was thinking of it over here and I wanted to get one of those torchier lamps which has a light that goes a little bit higher up than me so it would have been a little bit taller and it would have bounced off the light of the white ceilings and then another one, a second lamp that would come out that you could adjust and you could put the plant under it. But they went with this piece from West Elm instead, which looks beautiful, but it's not going to serve as much of the purposes as I wanted with the plants. So we're just going to have to go with what we have here. So I might end up putting a smaller plant under here and leaving that Dracaena a little bit closer to perhaps the window over here. So we'll have to see. Azizi. So Zamiel Cocos Zamiofolias, this is a plant that I actually grow in my interior of my space. And um, of course they put more foliage when they're right directly up next to a window, but it is a plant that is like super resilient and I think whoever ends up getting the space will be able to do well with this one. 
So this is an aglionema, and this is the exact cultivar that I wanted. I wanted the really dark leaves with the silver striping, and this actually happens to have a pretty wide leaf. And now aglionemas are also one of those ones that I grow in the interior of my space. Some of them are under grow lights, some of them are not, but I think this is going to be a great plant choice for this area as well. Some Hoyas. Those are nice with the little white margins. I think they're just probably Hoya carnosas. And this is a Hoya pubicalix. And another Hoya carnosa. Hoya crimson queen. So that is the type of cultivar of this one. So I asked for Marantas but the Marantas never came, so they gave me these Japortia vitatas, or Calathea vitatas, if they're known as. And here's the Syndapsis. So I was hoping for one that hangs, but I guess they didn't have one that hangs, so it's, I'm starting with a little baby one right here. Now for the planters, I'll show you what we have. This one, super gorgeous, look at that. So there's a lot of the grays and neutrals that this house or this um, space started with. So I saw this planter, actually really liked it. And then I got two of these larger planters right here. So the primary color palette in here is kind of like turquoises, mustard colors, a little bit more jewel tones, and also some pinks throughout. So I wanted to get that with the, uh, the color palettes here. I have some basins, which are important. I didn't want to get terracotta because I didn't want to have any water damage on this floor. And the terracotta is porous unless it's actually glazed. So it's important that like these are glazed so that the water doesn't seep out. There you go. That's the basin for this. And then, oh nice, she gave us a little bag too. That's perfect. That's gonna be a nice shopping bag for whomever lives here. Hang it right here. So here are the small planters. Let's see what we got. Some nice color palettes here. You'll see I tried to grab ones that had um, a little bit of blue throughout. brown and here's another one so that's what we're going to be working with when we start doing the plantings one of the things that I want to do is switch this out to a grow light so you already heard me complain that this was not the lamp that I initially wanted it looks pretty but um, I don't know if it's going to provide some extra light this is one of the GE grow lights that I was introduced to in the last houseplant home makeover. And it gives a nice white light. It's not like a yellow light. Um, so he or she may want to change this out, but I'm hoping that some of this will actually bring some light into the plants above and below. So I'm going to keep this lamp here in case, you know, she wants to change that out. So I have my plants pretty much set up. Now I am going to be using some of the Espoma products and I have lots of different products out. The organic perlite, the organic potting mix, and the organic orchid mix. So I'm gonna be mixing my own soil. I brought my handy dandy spoon because I like to just work with spoons. I'm gonna make a little bit of a mixture. I noticed that the aglionema has a lot more bark mixture in it, so I'm gonna use the um, organic potting mix and the organic orchid mix as a base. I like to add a lot more perlite in my mixtures, um, just because for most people, it's very easy to overwater your plants. And one of the ways to be able to combat that 
is actually by adding just a little bit more well-draining mixture like perlite. I'll just add a little bit of orchid mixture. And then some perlite. And perlite, I know it looks like styrofoam balls, but it really is just puffed volcanic stone. What you're gonna do is you're gonna feel like you're baking now because you're just gonna give this a nice mix so there's a lot more consistency. You don't wanna go in there with layers. Now for this aglionema, I might even put in a little bit more of this orchid mixture. So you could see some of those, that, those bark chunks right there. You see that? And this is great for epiphytes. So if you have Hoyas, for instance, which we do have some Hoyas here, uh, that would be great. So when they're ready to kind of repot in a larger size pot, this is the type of mixture that you're going to want to get. Of course, it says orchids and bromeliads, but it's also good for other epiphytes as well. So I'll show you what this looks like. So it's got some really healthy roots right there. Um, and I've already kind of pulled them out a little bit. And you can see it's a very barky mixture. You see perlite there already. So what I'm going to do is just add some of this to the bottom, just like this. Okay, so I'm gonna probably give about three to four inches down here so that the roots could grow in here. And you know, the reason why you wanna get as close to the mixture as possible as the grower's medium is because the roots are gonna be accustomed to kind of growing in that substrate. So, you know, giving that to the roots is gonna be great. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so this is, about, this is about right. And you'll see some roots kind of popping up here. So what I wanna do is make sure that this is gonna be filled in along the edges here. Because you wanna cover those roots. You don't wanna have any of those roots exposed. You don't want this bouncing around in the planter pot itself. Part of the reason why I like spoons, even though you can't get a lot of soil on them, is that they could fit into tighter spots, especially, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm planting up larger plants here, but sometimes when you have smaller plants and they're in like a three inch or a four inch container, having a shovel or a trowel is going to be a little bit too big. So I could be a little less messy on the floor too. I'll try to get the soil off the floor. You see this root kind of poking up right here? So we wanna make sure that that gets covered. Although roots are pretty smart. They're kind of like the brain of the plant and they will find their way down into the soil. And when you're watering these plants, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you water so thoroughly that the water comes out of, into the base, about 10 to 20% into the basin. So you want those roots to be able to go right down to the bottom of the basin. And then that way it'll, it'll really establish itself in the planter. All right, now I didn't put this soil all the way up to the top because if it's too close to the top, then when you water it, it's just going to kind of pour over on your carpet and this will live over there on the carpet and I wanna be mindful of that. Notice this is a glazed ceramic pot as well. So it holds in some of the water and it doesn't like ruin your carpet or your wood floor. All right, the next one is gonna be this big guy, this big snake plant. So what I'm gonna do is actually just pour all of this in here and use this planter as the bowl, essentially. And look, all this good stuff, I don't wanna waste that. So, otherwise, this just becomes dirt and it goes elsewhere. Okay, so I'm gonna just use a little bit of this organic potting mix. And if you don't have like a cactus or succulent mix, which I didn't bring a cactus or succulent mix, you could just kind of make it a little bit more of your own. So bring in some more of that perlite. Don't be afraid. I kind of even use almost a third, a third, a third. And then just use this as a big mixing bowl. See that? And it gets a nice consistency in there. And that way, if you're somebody who has a tendency to overwater, then just make a grittier mix. That's why I'm a big advocate of using perlite and amending some of the soils that you already have. We are going to try to dislodge this. There you go. It's a good way to see all the root structure there too. The way that snake plants actually propagate, one of the ways is that they produce these little offsets. And so 
you'll start to see this really fill out. All right, so this one is pretty much planted up. We're going to have to place them pretty soon. I am running a little low on soil, so I um, am going to just plant this one up, which I think I have enough for, especially because I have a bunch more of this organic orchid mix, and this is gonna be working totally fine for this Hoya puba calyx. So you can see it's primarily growing in a peat mixture right now, but it's a very loose peat mixture. So look, you can just see that it has the, the little roots right here. So I'm gonna take some of that, that mixture that the grower is growing in and add this organic orchid mixture right here. And then I'm just going to mix this up and use this in this beautiful planter right here, which has all the colorways that I, I have in this space. I got this off, an, off Etsy, so this is like a one of a kind piece. You can see this nice mixture. This is gonna be perfect for this Hoya. Now, initially I was going to have a Syndapsis pictus here that would be growing on the top. This, I don't think is going to survive in that area. So eventually I will probably have to just move this and move a Syndapsis pictus there. This I could actually put on, a, on the little table over here. I wanna secure this around the roots. These roots are very loose in that soil. And I think what's happening is that there's such a demand for house plants that sometimes the growers just wanna get them as soon as they're just lightly rooted and they get them out the door. So sometimes I see plants that are really well rooted that are almost like too well rooted. And in this case, this Hoya puba calyx was just lightly rooted in that soil, which is fine because it was easier for, for me to, to use a different potting medium around it. I wouldn't just keep this in a strictly peat mixture. That's fine when somebody's trying to root something up, but giving an epiphyte a nice, truly epiphytic mixture, like the orchid mix, is going to be probably better for the plant in the long run. That looks pretty nice, right? After you pot up your plants, be sure to water them thoroughly, as that helps them settle into the potting medium you just planted them in. Now this one is going to have the least amount of light probably than all the other plants. And part of the reason is why I'm choosing a ZZ plant here is largely because like I have a ZZ plant in my own interior space and it does pretty well and it actually puts out new growth, not as much as the ones closer to the window, but I think with just the ambient light here from the kitchen, it's going to be pretty okay. So that's my guess. That's pretty much only the only green thing I would put here, except if I had a Syndapsis pictus, which is another one that has grown extremely well in even a lower light condition in my own home. So the idea is to get probably a four inch or a six inch pot that's already hanging, but Chelsea Garden Center didn't have one available, so I will have to come back and finish that. And there's like little bits and pieces that I have to finish in this place. So if you come over here, I have a Hoya Puba Calyx right here, and this one might actually get switched out. I mean, I really love this planter pot right here, but this one might get um, uh, moved. This initially was the planter that was gonna go up on top of the, uh, the armoire. And if you see over on this end, that's the aglionema and the snake plant. And again, these are great plants that I've had in the interior of my space. And the fact that you are going to be getting some ambient light in from this northern window, the fact that we actually saw some of the light bouncing off of the other windows and off the side of the building into this place, will give it a little bit extra light. And I have one of the grow lights here in this lamp. Now, if we look over there into the bedroom area, you could already see there's quite a lot of light just coming off of that grow light there. And right there, we have the Calathea vitata. We have a uh, Hoya carnosa crimson queen, and also the Peperomia obtusifolia, which I think is a really nice, oh, actually this is a different Peperomia. But I, I think that these ones, the thicker succulent ones are very good as starter plants. So I got some really easy plants for people. The moss, always very good, can't go wrong with that. And then you see I have the small Syndapsis pictus right here, which will probably end up starting to trail. It's a very tiny one. 
And then I have another Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen here in this beautiful landscape planter, which ties in again a lot of the colorways that we have here. It's the middle of winter, so I'm not going to be fertilizing the plants, but I am going to be leaving these Espoma organic indoor fertilizers here with whomever actually moves here. So when the spring comes, which is just right around the corner, then they'll be able to be on top of their fertilizing of their plants. So even though this was a small apartment, it had a lot of things to be done with it. And I love how it turned out. So here's a little sneak peek of what it looks like. Oh yes, when you come into my nice studio apartment. So welcome, there's not a huge amount of space that I have to show you, but I am very, very pleased how this turned out because when I first came in here, it was just neutral tones. It was a little sad, north facing windows, but you'll see that there's a flood of light in this apartment and I got some beautiful jewel tones and greens in here. And so what I'm gonna do is just take you through some of the selections that I made today. Let's look at the kitchen because I imagine the woman who is going to be moving into this apartment is a good cook and she loves to cook because this takes up about a third of the apartment. So. I ended up making it feel a little bit more at home. So we have some good herbs that will be growing here, a nice strong cutting board, some rice and glass jars, so that shallots and, and garlic already. And then of course she's a, a tea drinker, although we have coffee too. We put the coffee up here in the, in the cupboards. We found some tea, some good olive oil, some local pasta, strawberries and fruits, always good to have. And of course she loves to cook, so she has some cookbooks as well. If you can't tell, she loves plants, but north facing windows, you think it's gonna be the kiss of death for plants, but we have some grow lights assembled. At least we have large windows and we do get a little bit of light in here now and again. So we have some of the plants that don't require too high of lighting. She's got a couple of succulent cuttings right here that she might've taken from a friend that she's gonna try out they're probably gonna get a little etoliated or leggy because uh, it's gonna be very hard to grow succulents here, but she's going to try. And when the growing season happens, we have some Espoma organic plant food, some nutrition for the plants that she has growing. That's important to keep them healthy. So next we're moving over here to the island, which basically acts like a kitchen table. And so what I did is choose lots of jewel tones. I really went with a palette of more like this turquoise color with some golds or some um, deep ochre colors. I don't know who this girl is who's gonna be moving in here, but I decided her name is Lydia. So I wrote her a little note. Welcome to your new home at 111 Montgomery. May you settle in quickly and let's go to the garden soon because we are like right outside the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. So that's excellent. If I lived here, I would be at the Botanic Gardens every single day. I do like fresh cut flowers now and again, but they will probably turn bad very quickly. So for here in the centerpiece, I used these preserved flowers and I think it just gives a really good pop of color. So again, going back to those jewel tones of primarily turquoise and gold, but I also wanted to bring some pinks in here because you'll see when I take you to the bathroom later that some pinks and peaches will be coming in throughout. And you're also seeing some of those pink colors coming in through the artwork here. This is by a local artist named Alina and she does some really beautiful organic paintings. And so the, the paintings here, I just wanted to keep a little bit more organic but you'll see some of the blues kind of pull in with this cyanotype print right here of a fern. And that's just to give a little pop of color to the wall. Then if you come over down here, you'll see I have some plants directly in the window. This again is a, a dried arrangement and it's in a African blackwood vase by A.D. Schwartz. And I just got this primulina, um, you know, this primrose, uh, just I picked it up at the supermarket and I have a Calathea lancifolia here, which I think it's now Japortia. Some more cards just to give it a sense of like it's lived in because the goal here was to make this place feel as if 
it's lived in, that somebody wants to live here. And I think that the little touches, the little notebooks, the little pens, the little handwritten letters, I think that really helps feel like this place can be lived in right away. Okay, so we're stepping over here to the living room and you'll notice that we have more plants over here from Chelsea Garden Center and also some of the vases from Chelsea Garden Center, the planters. We got a snake plant and an aglionema, which these are great plants for lower light areas. You know, you'd wanna go a little bit more creative with plants, but with north facing windows, you just have to be very edited. Now, uh, we got a new chair here, a nice lighting fixture from West Elm. I just thought that was kinda nice, just bringing in a little bit of notebook from Penguin Random House. I kinda view this girl as somebody who's like into health and wellness and food, but also kind of the, the unknown and the spirituality side of it. So we have enchantments, um, kind of like a fun little witchy guide. Of course, I have my book, How to Make a Plant Love You. And if you just notice a little bit more of her bedside stand, I have a dream book for her, The Sun and Her Flowers, which is a really nice poetry book. And just like a little knickknack it says dream and a little smudge stick right here a kitty planter with some preserved plants and and here another type of pressed plant so just just little things i think knickknacks that just make it feel again that this girl is loving and living in her place and making the most of a very small apartment so i have this e-cat and some nice cushy pillows I'm waiting for a couple more pieces of the bedding, but you know, this is a Murphy bed, so that means it actually pulls down from the wall. It is totally a shin buster. I don't know how she's uh, going to manage kind of around this, but you could actually put the bed up and there is a desk underneath, but I like the bed down a little bit more because it feels a little bit more homey. I don't want this to feel like a workspace. I want it to feel like a home space. And so making the bed really nice and cushy I think is is going to be a good thing. And of course the couch, which the couch wasn't my choice, but we had to go with this. So, you know, if it has this neutral tone, then I wanted some of those jewel tones to kind of come through. And I just love the texture of these pillows. I love the texture of the blanket. One way to actually make a home feel really lived in is just bringing some of these soft textural elements into it, as well as these pops of color. So over in this corner, this is actually the corner that you walk into. So I don't want people to come in and just see a wall. Um, there's actually some depth to this room and it kind of brings you in with a little bit more of the, the greenness and the color. So I have a Syndapsis pictus that's hanging right here from Chelsea Garden Center. And this is one of the things that grows in the interior of my space very well. And so I think that this will actually be a good survivor here which is just getting a little bit more ambient light. Then you'll notice this kind of piece of artwork that I just got. I got that off of Wayfair, but I really, again, liked the real organic shapes and the colors because I think it will start to pull your eye towards the colors of the hand painting by uh, Alina down there, which I think is for me the real centerpiece here as far as artwork goes. Then you'll see a Zamiel Kulka Zamiafolia, again, another really resilient plant when you don't have a lot of direct lighting. And then it kind of draws your eyes into the other organic shapes and the plants like the Dracaena in the back, which is again, one of those columnar shaped plants that um, is a real statement piece. You can see I have another place where this will light up and the plants will grow underneath there. And there's not a lot of shelf space here, so this was one place where I thought like she could just keep some of her books, her seeds, her tillandsia, a nice um, watering can right here. All right, moving on to the bathroom. Not the most exciting room of the house, but we tried to make it exciting. So if you come in, you'll see that this is a little bit more girly. It's got that those pink tones and a little bit more of those gold and ochre tones. So one of the ways that I kind of like made this look as if she's already here is just by dressing it up, you know, having some nail polish and some little trinkets in her trinket dish. You know, if we put on a little um, light in here, it would give it a, a little bit more of like that spa kind of feel. And then if you come in, you see this kind of nice pink color. She's got some more personal care products in there. And of course, some eucalyptus and some dried arrangements kind of hanging from the shower. So it gives you this kind of waft of eucalyptus spa treatment when you're here. 
And then some of those textural elements in the towels again. Of course, a yoga mat. Here's some of the magazines in here, but we'll be getting a magazine rack separately. So what I'm getting is basically a basket for magazines. So again, kind of pulling in some of these organic elements to break up this kind of like modern feel. And then obviously you notice that this room has no light, no windows. So if you come in here, the one green piece that we have is this gorgeous piece by Artisan Moss. It fits so well in here. This is preserved, so you don't really have to take care of it. And I absolutely think it's wonderful because when you come out of the shower, it'll be one of those things that you actually see and you'll get green space even though you don't have any windows in here. So it would be a little bit torturous to put live plants in this space. So having something preserved and still getting that, that um, flash of green, I think is just so good. So what do you think of the space? I'd love to know. So tell me what you think in the comments below and how you might actually design it differently. See you guys later. How do you think the houseplant home makeover came together? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're keen to see this channel grow, then hit the subscribe button and consider becoming a sustaining member for the channel, which starts at the price of a cup of coffee per month. And don't forget, we have lots of opportunities for houseplant education as well, including my book, How to Make a Plant Love You, the 125 Houseplant Care Spreadsheet, and the Houseplant Masterclass, which contains the 350 Houseplant Care Spreadsheet. More information can be found on homesteadbrooklyn.com.